Hey guys, it's Brian Spinsky from Lost Silver Productions uh, here for this week's edition of the Game Show Talking Fun Lightning Rounds. And as you can see, we are kind of on the road here. Yeah, you, know, you see my lovely Hi. wife Andrea, uh, you know, doing all the all the driving there. Little Joey's there in in the back and somewhere back there. Uh, I can't do it with the angle of the thing. Here, throw your hands up, Brianna. Okay, yeah, Brianna's back there too. All right, I brought I. I decided to do it here because th this week's bits, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, I know we can relate to and stuff like that from different things. So, let so let's get the all the items out of the way here. I want to start with the with the one thing that I've been racking my brain about this all week long because. Uh, this is it's been the biggest news of, of the whole week uh, and it go it goes to ABC but it doesn't totally make sense to me why they chose this in the in the wake of the success of match game and the hundred thousand dollar pyramid uh, coming back this past summer to join uh, Family Feud and also to tell the truth as well however ABC has decided to resurrect another classic but I've been trying to figure out why this one, because get, uh, did you hear about this, Q? They decided to revive for next summer the Gong Show. Yes, Will, Will Arnett has been tapped to to host the revival or whatever. Why do you think they? Why do you think in the wake of actually having good talent shows, why do you have any guess, Q? Why they would do the uh, the Gong Show as opposed to any traditional I guess game with show? All these Americans got talent, you know. Things zanier and familiar. It's not to say that it can't work, but it ju it's just like how do you duplicate uh you know all all that? How do you how do you make uh the kind of show like that relevant for today? Mm -hmm. Hashtagging you know like mm. hashtag no. hashtag I have an idea. crazy I have guy an idea. with a arrow or I have crazy an idea. dog. I Trick guy, I don't know. You know get, get it through with the get it through with the so, with the social media the same way as some yeah. of the wild acts from talent do. Okay, no, no. Okay, no. That's that's a good point. No, I, was, I didn't think of that. What what happened, Bria? Maybe if some of the creators are still living, we if they have a Facebook page. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if Chuck Barris himself has anything in in that regard. I, we I could don't. really ask them if they could bring back. Show or make well, no way. It's even well, rerun it. Well, it's all it's already coming back in the, in the first place and stuff like that. But it, um, hey. yeah, but I don't think ever 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 do since it. you you don't know some of the story regarding uh, that you know, back the old days of the the Gong Show and stuff like that. Yeah. And there's and there's reason why Chuck Barris doesn't do anything in in any of that type of you know department or whatever it's its own own thing well, and your phone is, is ringing there <laughs> you know what i consider that time to go to the next segment <laughs> all right so let's get past the the zaniness of the gong show and let's uh go go to the zaniness from another network because abc wasn't the only ones that uh that did that made a big uh, announcement this week uh nickelodeon was very busy too they matter of fact went so far they made two major announcements this week first uh they put they put an official date uh an air date for the uh legends of the hidden temple movie that we learned about back in the uh back in the spring and the summer and things like that that's going to air on the saturday of uh thanksgiving weekend november 26th I so, love Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah, no, no, I know, you, I know you like it and all that stuff. No, exactly. But remember, we've known for the past few months there was going to be the movie about it, right, right, Brianna? <gasps> they, they were going to try to turn it into a movie form again. Yeah. We'd still rather they just brought back the game show, but that's okay. Well, hopefully it'll be okay. And then, um, but then on top, so that's going to be on Maybe November. They're going to make a of the game show just well like well we'll see well watch watch the tra watch the trailer the trailer has been very uh proven that it's got a lot of the elements that are very faithful to the uh game th yeah they're very faithful to the show you'll you'll see it because they've got the shrine of the silver monkey in it they've got you know uh depictions of medusa's lair kirk fogg and olmec are there of course as we know and stuff like that okay but they comments okay about all right. Well, oh, here. Well, let me let me just say, let me just say the rest because that's not the only Nickelodeon thing that was announced this week. They also announced, um, and they announced this on Thursday, which was the now 
uh, Q, did you know this past Thursday the 6th was the official 30th anniversary of Double Dare? Oh, that yeah, that yeah. was the day they officially debuted. On that day, Nickelodeon announced that uh, that the on Thanksgiving Eve, Wednesday, November 23rd, they're going to have a special uh, prime time on, on Nick at Night. They're going to have a special 30... Uh, 30-year anniversary retrospective of Double Dare. Mark Summers, John Harvey, Robin Russo, they're all they're all going to come back for uh, for this retrospective. They're going to reshow clips from uh, from San Diego Comic Con when uh, when they did the you know when they did did the special uh, panel celebrations and did the, uh, the the loop the short recreations of Double Dare with the the former you know 90s Nick stars and things like that. Got we got to be very excited for this and oh, and, yeah. and and who knows maybe. Do you think? Do you want to get? Do you want to put any sort of percent prediction on if these things are successful? That they may actually. Oh, I don't know. Bring these shows back for real. Yeah, with all the other resurgence. Maybe Re reboots, reboots and things like that. Yeah. Because yeah. like yeah, if if everything else can be rebooted and revived or whatever, why can't you know? Why can't uh, you know, Double Dare and Hidden, and Hidden Temple and things like that? The only can thing I you just my hope. Prediction? Go for it. Um, I predict if they like the show being on TV, they would, but, but if they didn't, then they'll, it'll be like, they wouldn't be sure if they were going to bring it back if they, if they don't really like the show. Hmm. But I think they would bring it back because yeah. they were really good shows. Yeah, I think it's just. I think it's probably just going to come down to this perspective of what a lot of, a lot of the you know the hardcores you know you know complain about or whatever. It's just that like the vision of today's you know TV executives. It wasn't the same as the ones back then. So it's a question of will they get it? Will they hold true to the concept? But so I get that. I guess we'll just have to pretty much wait and see. So who knows. And uh, as you can see, we're back at the house there. I guess the car trip didn't last as long as we thought it was going to, but it was nice having the, the family as part of the, the video here. We just thought it would be a little something different. You want to see us do that again? Let us know in the, the comments below. So, so I think I think they enjoyed it. I know Brianna did. Anyway, getting back to the news here. Um, you, some of you guys uh, probably remember uh, going uh, back about about somewhere around 10 years ago, or the cases, maybe, maybe a little longer. If you remember, Game Show Network used to have on their website, they used to have a section of their page devoted to uh, games for quite a while. They it only they just stopped doing it about either last year or the year before, and they closed the page down. But they used to have you know games that you could play both for fun and for cash. Um, I remember playing uh, Lingo with a, a fr a friends I used to have for... A uh, couple of years when they had the the online tournaments, um, also being uh, he played Bejeweled too. I used to play Big Money and things like that. Well, that site's gone, but now Buzzer, the other game show channel, has stepped into the fray. As earlier this week, they signed a deal with and started officially on on Facebook. They signed a deal with Ludia to produce Buzzer Casino. Ludia, as you know, they produced many uh, game show related titles, both for you know home consoles and on Facebook apps and things like that. Some critically praised, some critically panned, depending on who amongst the game show fan base that you talk to. But in, in, in any event, the casino app features uh, you know, casino style games, you would guess that are with bonus rounds that are modeled after the some of the classic game shows. Like you could be able to play Plinko from The Price Right, Fast Money from Family Feud, as well as things from Press Your Luck, Card Sharks, Let's, Let's Make a Deal, uh, and a host of other things. And also be able to watch vintage clips you know, from Buzzer's vaults through the, the playing of the games. So that just officially started up this week. And it should be interesting to see how exactly, whether it's a success, going to be a success or not, because if, if you think about it, um, which, given everything that's going to be involved with it, will it attract the gamers? Will it attract the, the game show fans? Will, will it attract the, you know, the both of them? And then of course, the big question is, you know, depending on who it attracts or whatever, will this ultimately generate an, 
you know, more revenue for the network in order to be able to, you know, fund their operation, make the network grow, and to be able to bring in more, uh, you know, classic episodes and and maybe even a couple, you know, new shows into the into the programming mix. A lot of questions about this, but hey, given the nature of the venture and what it could. You know, and what it could offer, obviously, you hope for it to be a big success. What do you think it's going to do? Let us know in the comments below. Probably the biggest moment of the week has to go over the Jeopardy and the fact that the longtime champ Seth Wilson was defeated on Wednesday after 12 wins and going for win number 13. And it had to do with a question of wagering strategy on Final Jeopardy. And for me, as a math teacher, this one, it's, it's obviously, it's a very difficult, you know, situation to try to, you know, to calculate and see what really was the right move. As you can see from the scores, you can see that Seth only had a $2,000 lead on his nearest competitor, with the third place player being way back. Now... As it would happen, the category was the economy. You can see the clue right here. If you want to pause for one second to read it, I'll let you. But anyway, as it turns out, what Seth's strategy was, was that he was trying to, I guess he felt that the opponent, given how far they were both ahead, didn't want to make a, a super large wager with the, you know, be, based on the premise that if the low contestant got it right and she, and she didn't, that she would end up busting down and losing. So given that, the normal strategy that most people think is that, okay, the second place player is going to bet just enough to go ahead of the champion by a dollar in order to be able to force them to give the correct answer. And that's exactly what happened, except for the fact that she didn't bet just 2001 she bet the whole 17,000 and when his wager was revealed to be only five bucks that sealed the deal and Seth was to thrones now I'll admit I've been trying to think about this myself and see exactly what was the best move to make in things and obviously it's it's very tough you know to do so you know because you don't you don't know based on the category you don't know based on your own confidence, what you think the opponent's confidence is, there's obviously a lot of factors to consider. If I had to venture a guess as to what the best wager he could have made was, the, be the, the best wager he could have done was to just go for it as much as he possibly can and risk 15,001 in order to put himself at 34,001 in order to be able to you know, get the win. Because even then, if he missed, he would have gone down to thirty nine ninety nine. And let's say that his opponent decided to just make sure that she ended up at thirty six oh one to make sure that she didn't go down below second in ter in terms of the the final clue and stuff like that. So either way, he would have still been he would have still been covered if. The two of them had both missed, and the third and the distant third player ended up getting it right. So mathematically, it would it seems like it would have been the best move. Should it have been? What do you guys think? It's a uh, it's a tough call to actually make. Uh, so who knows if you would have done the same thing or whatever the case is. Well, if nothing else, then what I hope you do is to come see us uh, back here in two weeks for our next game show, Talking Fun episode, where in the spirit of Seth Wilson, our topic is going to be Masters of the Game. We're going to be talking about the biggest winners in the history of game shows, uh, you know, multiple shows across the genre, as well as the, the most clever contestants who exposed key you know, loopholes or other sorts of rules in the context of their games and use that to maximize their own winnings potentials in different ways. So we'll talk about some of our favorites. We hope to hear some of yours. So we'll hope you come back and see us for that particular episode on Friday night, October 21st, 
live here on YouTube at 8 p.m. Eastern. And of course, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video and our whole channel and on Facebook at facebook.com slash lost silver productions. And of course, please join us on our Patreon, patreon.com slash lost silver and help support our anime game show operations and among other things. And we're going to get some more updates going on that soon. We promise. Until then, my name is Brian Sapinski on behalf of my whole family and our group at Lost Silver Productions. And you have survived the lightning rounds. And remember, if it's game shows in reality, you'll find it right here on Game Show Talking Fun. Take care. We'll see you.